Hi, everybody, and welcome into the Weekend Preview. My name is Aaron Berlin, joined alongside by the skipper of the Kansas Jayhawks, head coach Rich Price. And Coach, it's always nice to see you. And, of course, we come off a successful weekend. We dropped two of three at Oklahoma, but the play overall was excellent. Yeah, it was a really good series, Aaron. Um, I was really pleased with the way our players bounced back after the Thursday night game because of the weekend series. So obviously moved up because of the Easter holiday. And Jonathan Gray, the Thursday night starter for Oklahoma, may be the best pitcher that I've seen in my 35 years in college baseball next to Steven Strasburg. And he's everything that he's built to be. 97 to 101 pitch to De Leon, I think, in the sixth inning. And on top of that, plus change up, plus breaking ball. And he completely dominated us, but I was really pleased with the way we bounced back on Friday and Saturday and lost a tough extra inning game on, on Friday night and found a way to grind out a huge win Saturday to get out of there against the number eight team in the country with, with a victory and salvage a weekend. Let's talk about the pitching in that series. I thought Frank got off to a rough start, but he really grinded for the next five or six innings. And I thought he was excellent the rest of the way through. And then Wes comes out, really only has one or two bad innings, but the rest of the way he was solid. And then you can't say enough about what Thomas has done. Yeah, I was actually pleased after the first inning. Obviously, their four-hole hitter railed that hanging changeup into the seats for a three-run homer in the first inning against Duncan. And, and on Thursday night, when you're facing a pitcher like Jonathan Gray, you know going into the game as ERA is right around one that if you're going to win, you're going to win 1-0, 2-1, 3-2, something like that. And that put us behind the eight ball, but he went back out and put five zeros up and, and grinded his way through it. I thought he found his feel for his change up in his breaking ball. And after the first, I thought it was one of his better performance of the year against, obviously, a top 10 team in the country. And you know, Wes is, Wes is a guy that goes out and gives you everything he's got every time you hand him the ball. And, you know, they did a really good job with two strikes. There are two freshman left-handed outfielders that hit left-handed, matched up with him. I think they got a combined five hits in the game against him left up versus left. But he gave us an opportunity to, uh, to stay in the game and find a way. And I can't say enough about Thomas Taylor for him to go out and pitch nine innings and, and have the game tied 1-1 when he left after nine maybe his finest performance as a Jayhawk. What's different with Thomas this year? I, I, I think there's a little bit of swagger there for the first time. I, I think his confidence level's at an all-time high. His deliveries obviously have been smoothed out. His command of the strike zone, both with his fastball and his ability now to, to spin his breaking ball in there was something that he's been inconsistent with in the past. But you know we're gonna move him to Friday night this week and reward him for his performances so far this season because he's clearly been our best guy and then we'll move Frank back to Saturday and then and move West to Sunday so you'll see that change take place this weekend but certainly you know you look at the TCU series when we went in there their preseason number eight in the country they have the best pitching staff that we have seen since Texas's 2005 national championship team and you know we win two out of three because we got two quality starts and last weekend we got one quality start but we found a way to win one game in order to win series is you obviously got to get three quality starts because you're going to get in a pitcher's matchup head to head where you pitch well and and you lose a tough well played baseball game so hopefully uh we think the switch will give us a better opportunity to get three quality starts on the weekend because that's that has not taken place yet baseball is a game of mental toughness how much does it say about your team after dropping that tough <laughs> 10 inning game on friday night and then coming back and playing a very tough game on I, I think it shows the progress that our young guys have made we still have 22 freshmen and sophomores on our roster and you know i told our st assistants when the game was over saturday after we've you know we get a seven spot in the first and, and in the sixth inning we're behind and for us to grind back and win and and, and keep fighting and clawing and guys clutching up at the end and getting it done. And then I can't say enough about Robert Kahana with his two shutout innings. And then Jordan Pache obviously comes in and closes out the victory, who's been fabulous all season. But a year ago, we wouldn't have won that game. When we had that big lead, gave it up, we'd have never came behind against a quality opponent. And I give a lot of that credit to, to, to the seniors, to Alex DeLeon and J.D. Dryling. Those guys have done a really good job of, of grinding and showing the, the, the younger players how to be tough and how to compete. And, we knew Oklahoma was going to make a run. That was one of the things I covered with our team after the game. When it was 7-0, that game isn't over. And uh, like a top-10 team that they are, they came back and took the lead, and we fought back and, and, and got a tremendous victory to salvage the weekend. Speaking of Alex, he has a tough game on Thursday night, but the next two games of the series, he was solid offensively and defensively. Yeah, he really was. I mean, it was good to see him swing the bat well. I mean, obviously, J.D. Dryling got off to an incredible start the first month, and now he's kind of hit the lull. And, you know, in, in, in a 56-game season, there's going to be peaks and valleys, just like there is in pro ball, where you're swinging the bat, lights out, and then you're grinding, and then you're going to have stretches where you don't swing it very well. And, you know, we've gone through a tough two-week period without De Leon hitting, without Dryling hitting, and, 
if, if they don't swing the bat at a high level, you know, batting where they are in the order, we're going to struggle offensively. And you saw it at BYU. And, and, and hopefully we can get J.D. back on track and we're going to give him some extra work uh, Thursday and Friday earlier than practice and early outs and see if we can get two or three of those guys that aren't swinging it real good to get them, get them straightened out again. Another guy that's playing really good defense as well as coming on now on the offensive side of the ball after missing a couple weeks is Kevin Koontz. Yeah, he missed three weeks with that, with that high ankle sprain and it, he makes us so much better defensively with his experience at shortstop and then it puts Prestacio over at second base that, that's a plus defender on that side of the bag and who's, who's having a tremendous year. He's hitting over 300 and playing lights out defensively, leading the league in walks and setting the table for our guys and and I can't say enough good things about the job the freshman Tommy Mirabelli did he's he started every game for three weeks helped us win a series at TCU and filled in big time and, and I think showed the potential to be a quality division one player before he's done it in his career at KU uh, clearly the strength of our club has been our ability to catch the ball and when we do that we're, we're pretty good when we struggle defensively then obviously we don't strike as many guys out as you would like because our pitchers pitch to contact, we have to play defense at a high level, and Koontz gives us that stability at shortstop. Let's take a look back at last night's game against Creighton. You moved Michael Sudo to center field for the first time this year. And that was only designed to give Tucker Tharp two days off. I mean, uh, he's one of the most competitive guys on our team. He plays tremendous defense in center field for us, and he's really scuffling right now at the plate. And when you're as competitive as Tucker is and when you're struggling, that hole just keeps getting bigger and bigger as, as you continue to, to fail. And I told him after the win Saturday that he wasn't going to play the Tuesday-Wednesday games this week. I'm going to give him a mental break and get him some extra work and see if we can get him untracked. And you also switch up the lineup a little bit. Dakota Smith, who is batting leadoff, gets moved back to where he was at the start of the year, and then Kevin retakes that top spot. Well, you know, Kevin, Dakota Smith's been our best offensive player in conference, and he has the highest batting average against the guys that, with the plus velocity that we've seen from TCU and, and, and Oklahoma. And I, and I put him back in the middle of the lineup to put him in an RBI situation. And I'm hopeful that if I've got Dryling and DeLeon and Smith, and Suter, those four guys in the middle of the order, that we can get them in RBI situations because, uh, quite frankly, I felt like as good as Dakota Smith was swinging the bat in the one hole, he wasn't getting enough chances to hit with guys in scoring positions. So that, that was the reason for that move. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Oklahoma State this coming weekend. They're top three in the Big 12, but we're sitting there at three and three after probably the toughest stretch of the Big 12 Conference facing Oklahoma and TCU on the road. What's in store this week? Well, you know, Aaron, that's exactly the message I gave to our players. I, I don't think any team in a BCS conference in the country has had a tougher start than we've had to go on the road to two teams that are, that are preseason top 10 in the country and are favored to be first and second in the conference, and we got out of it three and three. And when you combine the travel that we've had, where we've played six of the first seven weekends on the road and only five home games, I mean, that's just unbelievable that we can be a BCS school and only play five home games as we're sitting here April 2nd, April 3rd, whatever it is this week. So I, we're excited to play at home. We, our players love Hogan Ballpark. They love McCarthy Family Clubhouse, the Paget Indoor Facility. It gives us the opportunity to prepare our team properly, and hopefully we'll take advantage of, of getting to play at home. It's supposed to warm up finally this weekend. But Oklahoma State's on a really good roll. They're coming in with a tremendous record. They've got power arms. They, they've, they're very good offensively. They're well coached like every Oklahoma State team is and every team in our league is or you wouldn't be at this level. But I think our players are really excited to be home and we get Oklahoma State, we get Texas next weekend and if we can find a way to win a couple home series we've put ourselves in a tremendous uh, position with, with basically will be the first half of the season. Every Big 12 series is important, but how important are these next two? I, I think we have to win the series and be over 500 when the next two weeks are over. And then you can literally look at it that we've all played Oklahoma, TCU, Oklahoma State, and Texas, the four best teams in the league we will play the first four weekends. And if we could be over 500 at that point in time in conference, we will put ourselves in a great position to finish strong and, and to make some noise in the Big 12 standings and, and contend for an NCAA playoff berth. Well, if our pitching keeps up how it is, I think the sky's the limit, don't you think? It all goes back to starting pitching there. Well, Skip, I appreciate it as always. You can catch the Jayhawks this weekend as they take on Oklahoma State. Games Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can catch Friday and Sunday's game on KLWN as well as we'd like to see out at Hogan Ballpark. Temperatures are supposed to be up in the 70s. You can also catch the games on AT&T, Jayhawk All Access.